By the way, I was explaining to Barbara how to cut my hair. Because this is an out of town haircut I just yeah. met. These two bald headed want to like make fun of me. The instruction was crazy. So around here, do this, and the back here, up but top, I keep it. Exactly, there's nothing to talk about with yeah. this. Like, but I get it all off though. You, oh, you take it all off. All of it comes off. Okay. Okay. And, and I just need your hairline, funny style. So God you should understand. Like, right. 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 The truth of the matter is, do you have a ball head or not? Yes. I go all day. I go. I mean, having an all-star Mardi Gras at the same time, <laughs> this wasn't what I thought of. Who does that? Somebody needs to rethink the logistics, man. I mean, no, like, somebody needs to think the logistics. Somebody <laughs> needs to, you can't rethink it. They never thought about because it. Because the truth of the matter is Mardi Gras isn't actually on the calendar. Right. Like, it's, oh, not, it's, like, oh, it's not like it was a it's secret. It's not like, like, oh, we just found out we had Mardi Gras. Oh. What you bring, Mr. Stout? It's an 82 Latour, you know. Every time I'm with the king, we can't just be talking about top fives and in sports and music and not talk top five wines. This is your 13th All-Star? 13th, all -star? dog. This is my 13th, 13th. All-Star appearance. This is my 14th All-Star weekend. Does that bug you out? You know what bugs me out? I'm the oldest person in the game. <laughs> That's why I'm bugged out. <laughs> You guys have played in some of the greatest games of all time. Do you know when you're in it? Right. That holy like we make like this is we're in it or are you just lost in the nah, game? You don't know. No, you don't know. No, you don't know. No. You just playing. Yeah, like you don't know at that point in game seven, like yo, this is about to be one of the greatest game sevens ever. Like you don't know this block about to happen. Like you don't know. You're just hooping. Yeah, you, you don't know hooping. Kyrie about to hit this shot after neither one of our teams have scored in four minutes and 32 oh, seconds. Sure. You don't know that. Do you even realize nobody scored in four minutes? No. Nah. No. 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 You just have no idea. You just hoop. Just playing. You just hoop. All you saying is like, I can't. I don't want. I don't want this man in front of me to score. That's all you thinking. That's it. Are you tired at that point? Fourth quarter, three minutes. Are you tired? Like, are you? So, I, mean, I mean, you ain't gonna ask for a sub, but yeah. does that even factor yeah, you're in? you're tired, but that's the last thing you telling yourself, though, is I'm tired. You tired, but you, the, the real, the real, ain't gonna never tell themselves they tired. Mm -hmm. You tired now, and you might even bend over and hold your knees, but you would never, in your mind, let it creep into your mind like, yo, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna let it, you ain't gonna let yourself do it. Bro, when you went down, was your wrist, were you hurt when he went down when? When he went down when in the game, when he went for the, when you, Oh, this year. <laughs> no, 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 in the, the finals. In the last four minutes, LeBron went to the hoop. I don't he even down. remember that. Yeah, the he last went play, down. When I went to the free throw line. Who fouled you? Oh. It was you? That game was a blur, man. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Exactly. And I remember, like, every play of every game. That game was a blur. But that shows you y'all in it. Y'all not thinking about yeah, it. So like, like, that game was a blur. I, I want to say, when I went to the Olympics, and you got a lot of Olympic coverage this year. Yeah. I'm not sure if you really know that. You felt like you was the swimming team, the volleyball team. You was like you was on every team, on like the basketball team. And uh, watching the final for the gold game, it was actually the first time in my life that the Star Spangled Banner actually meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And I got fired up. Mm -hmm. Man, I got fired up. Do you feel like that? There's sometimes you hear South Spangled Banner? That was big. Like, to start that game, the gold medal game, like, hearing that, standing on the podium. But even more so, when I hear it now, it means more to me. Yeah. I think that's what I appreciate more than anything about Coach K. Mm -hmm. Coach K make you really, really understand and appreciate what Represent your country is all about. Really? Yeah. Does he, he does. preach it a lot to you? Absolutely. He don't even people. talk about basketball that much. Yeah. He just talk about like the commitment, like being there for your brother, like mm -hmm. like fighting for your brother, like being part of Team USA, being a part of the United States of America. What it means to represent the red, white, and blue. Yeah, like when y'all stand up there. Yeah, he's a military guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so, it fires me up. Right. It fires me up. Right. Right. By the way, Coach K, this season, what he did with Duke. It's one of the greatest things I ever heard. Pete, tell him what do you know what he did with Duke this year? No. So you know he, he was, two rooms this year. You so know he, was, he, was he was out having back surgery, right? Mm -hmm. So he calls a team meeting at his house. So he informs the team, you guys are not playing to Duke standard, so I'm locking you out the locker room. You Get dressed in the hallway. The anymore. You're changing the hallway. Get dressed in the hallway. You can't use the, the you can't use the locker room. room. That's one. Two, 
Until further notice, don't wear anything that says Duke on it. On campus or no one. I don't want to see anything anyone wearing anything. Duke basketball, Duke, I don't want to see you in a Duke t-shirt. You got to wear all high school t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> targeting. <laughs> Wherever you want. I, don't go in my locker. That's like my grandmother. Don't go in my refrigerator. Right, right. And stay out of my uh, I told you, stop running in and out of this house. I stop told you. And that was the last time I told you, running in and out of this house. So they got, put on, they got put on punishment. But, but we still have practice, coach? Absolutely. Yeah. So where are we supposed to get dressed, coach? I don't care. Just be in practice. Think about that. I respect that. I, like I love that. it. You think that's a fair thing? Let's lock, let's, let's they lock playing, in, man. They playing better. They playing let's lock, lock in. Better. We got to get focused. We got, that means we got really, really locked and in. And they, like, they turned it around. Dre is right. Play. They balling right yeah, now. They playing well. Another like guest over here. <laughs> you guys will never believe oh, I walked here. <laughs> <laughs> look at the fuck out of here. I swear to you, I walked here. Here he comes with the boy. You ain't got that look. He's not sweating. Where you ain't sweating? Your shirt ain't wrinkled. Your shirt ain't wrinkled. Your shirt ain't wrinkled. I guarantee you, I walked here. You seen Trap? Have you seen Trappy yet? Oh, Trappy! I'll send him get out the truck. Yeah. You know what? Draymond and I were just having this conversation. Some people love the process. And everybody else just wants the outcome. Yeah. And, you, oh, yeah. and I was telling Draymond, if you just listen to people talk, it's very clear to tell who loves it or not. When you hear Bill Belichick win the Super Bowl and say, this is great, and there's no, there's no other, no, there's no other place I'd rather be than he, standing here tonight. But in all honesty, we're five weeks behind every behind. other team in the NFL for the 2017 season. The first thing you go is like, he's insane. But he just wants to get. This is great. This is what is. But I got to get back into the process. That's what I'm pulled towards. When you hear Tom Brady say, "I'm definitely playing into my mid 40s. I now have all the answers to the test. Why would I stop taking it now?" You can't show me a deep. Well, you're like, you ask me oh yeah, he's crazy, said, man. He's crazy. I want to ask you, fam, because I went to half of those games. How did you? Did you know? Like while we having this conversation, was it something that? some kind of inflammation that you just knew that you were going to come back from 3-1? Did you know this? Like, did y'all have a real sit-down, just a team meeting? Did y'all? Because it could be some things that make, like, a real momentum shift. It was just, it, it wasn't like, it's all about belief in yourself, man. And all of us, and whatever we do, it was just like, shh, until the casket drop. Like, until the casket drop, man, for me, and it's like, I mean, as great as great as you know they, their team is, and still today, it's just like you can't you can't lose belief in yourself. Like, like you're there for a reason. Like we're all here for a reason. Like you know what I'm saying? There's no cakewalk to get to that position. Like you just gotta like. And I don't know, dog. You just gotta. The better, the better. That's that's actually drilling down on it. The the broader question is actually, did you really think y'all could win a championship or even compete for one? when you left Miami and went back to Cleveland. Coming back from 3-1 is great, but did you but, really but, believe but, Cleveland but, could be great again? But no, that, that, that's it. Me looking at how things started, first of all, I always felt like Kyrie was a dog. He just didn't have anyone to play with, and then when he got around somebody that had uh, wisdom and, and, and some kind of like structure, I felt like his game was going to turn around anyway. You got a lot of players that I see that, that basically a plan because they love the game, but they don't even, they know they're not going to win, so it's still like a little piece of their game that we haven't that's seen yet because it hasn't been open up yet, you know what I'm saying? Right now, like if you yeah. put certain players on teams where they can actually compete, you will see stuff that we, like we already knew Kyrie was dope, but when he got around, bro, he was able to open up a little that's bit. That's the hardest thing. But there's no guarantee that happens, Trey. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing in our league to kind of like judge a player. Yeah, like, We'll you be, never know what's gonna happen, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and we fall into the we fall into it a lot because you be like, I don't want him. He's been on he's in seven years. He's never played in one playoff game. I don't really want him. Like, I, and I'll say that, or I'll be like, I don't really know what he would do for. It. Like, I don't like his attitude. But it's like, you never know because a change of scenery and a change of it, it, it could change a whole lot, like for a guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me, let me give you the other side of that. In, 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 in business, hold on. In, in business, you look at people's resumes and nothing in their resume. You see Google, you see this place, you see that place, you see whatever industry you're in, you're looking at skill sets, but nothing in their resume talks about work ethic. And everybody gets credit for that they didn't do. We all do. That's part of the thing. You were part of a team. You're part of a thing. So what role did you play in actually 
driving the outcome versus being a teammate of the outcome. And great CEOs, great managers of teams, great coaches, GMs, that's the real decision you gotta make. Like, was it the guy or was it the environment the guy was in? Is he bad for our locker room or was he just bad for that locker room? It's a style, it's a combination of things. Because here's the thing, it's the player, it's the people around the player, it's about having a maturation process. If a guy don't understand what he actually supposed to be doing. Well, that, that, that's the coaching, though. What's up, What's up, James? Sorry about that loss, man. Man. Oh, we love you. Your shoes are a little too tight, baby. What? <laughs> I can still run. Listen, we got a lot of guys. I told Stout this, and Stout just brought it up. Go he ahead. told me this, LeBron told me this at the Nick game, and he starts going through the tendencies of the athletes. But the thing that was most important, he's like, these guys are running around, and they have no idea what their roles are. They don't even know where to shoot. But that's so we're looking at Shumpert. Shumpert's, on the, Shumpert's on the Knicks, and he's running around. He goes, this guy is great. He, he just doesn't even know where to shoot. Passes. He doesn't even know what he's supposed to do. He's he's like, shoot like, like, he's he doesn't know his role. One is coaching. Because we got a lot of coaches that don't want to coach. Don't want to coach. What are they going to do? All what levels. are they doing? At all levels, what I'm telling you. What are they you, doing, man? So what are they doing? But well, the first thing the coaches going to do in the training the camp, in so training no, camp, no. you know your 12 players, a coach, you know what you got. You got to set the locker room right away. Right away. You do this, you're an energy player, you know your role, you come in, you shoot threes, you're a ball mover, you're a defender. So when you get that chemistry down, you go out and practice, you gotta practice, they just can't talk it. And 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 and, and, and either from the coach or from the the the, the, the commander of the team. The leader of the team. The leader of the team gotta nip that in the butt as soon as they see something. Like if it's a player on your team that shouldn't be dribbling, or or if it's a player on the team that shouldn't be shooting threes or as a player on the team that's doing something he shouldn't be doing, either the coach has got to address it or the leader of the team got to address it because now it unravels the whole, because at the end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day, sports, business, yeah, right. everything, you, we just want to win. Specifically to Dre, Bron, and Uncle Oak. You're telling me there are players that play in the NBA that don't, professional players that don't know their role? I'll tell you one step further. There's a lot of players in the NBA that don't know how to play basketball. They don't, and they in the NBA do not know but, how to but, play but, basketball. But they can play basketball. Yeah. I know how to play they basketball. Don't know I can't how. play. Yeah. There is guys on high level making oh, it's millions. There's some on the All-Star team right now. On the All-Star team. Wow. They have right bad efficiency. This is what it is. Hey, value shooters. There's a lot of value shooters on the All-Star team, but can't make their team win. If you watch a lot of games, you, you go to a lot of games, Tight. you watch a team all the time in Atlanta, Yeah, they don't have a superstar. They don't have a mind that can take over a game. He got a good coach, he got a good system. They play, they play good together. Keep yeah. Atlanta, they play good together. Yeah. Let me tell you this one thing. When you listen to commentators and people talk about sports, they talk about, oh, he's a smart player. Like, Tristan Thompson's a smart player. He just doesn't do anything he can't do. That's very smart. Rich, that's what we talked about. We afraid to do me to us. But to, but to Bron's, to, but to Bron's point, also he was educated very early on what he needs to do. And, and when LeBron came back to the Cavs, I said to Tristan, "Okay, let's do a highway. It's four lanes. LeBron's a Ferrari. Kyrie's a Lamborghini. Kevin loves a Rolls Royce." What vehicle are you? He's an F-350 heavy duty. You know why? Because you're picking up the sanitation. You don't get paid to do everything no one else wants to do. And guess what? At the end of the day, when they go to the south of France, you can go too. You can meet them there. No problem. So let me ask, let me ask this. And put about, your pride to the side. But, but, that, but nobody ever recognizes that as smart, Steve. And that's in that's business, too. Smart. Well, that's no smart. Knowing what you don't know is yes. smart. No one would smart. I, I can't do that, so I'm not yeah, going to no, do that. That's why this is so good. Huh. Dre, this is, this is what I do, and I'm going to do it at a high level. That's why he's so good. It's why Oak was 
Incredible. Oh, incredible. Oh, Listen, these two guys are like carbon copy of each other. Yes. And are, Oak and Dre is carbon copies of what the league is today and the league at daytime. This is what we do. We're going to do it at a high level. And I'm going to do it better than you at what I do. And these guys took it a step. These two guys took it one step further. On my, you on my team? You shoot and make threes. If you don't shoot and make threes, we're going to have to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, you be on the floor. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oak would do that. Like, you, you're supposed to get 25. If you don't get 25, we got to talk about this, bro. I'm rebounding. Why are you getting 25? Because you, you might make my job a little bit harder. Y'all yeah, do all the score. We do all the, you know, rebound, send picks, and make sure y'all OK. P.I., you want to take it a step further? Guys don't watch basketball. Oh, that's, I hate that. You play in the NBA, it's a Thursday night on TNT, and you're not watching the I game. I watched a Division II college basketball game on ESPNU yesterday and made my wife watch it with me. I swear to God, this team that I watched, they ran flex for 40 straight minutes. For 40 straight minutes, they ran flex the whole game. They won 45-39. I'm not naming the school. They won 45-39. They ran flex for 40 straight minutes, dog. I swear Let me to ask you this. Let me ask you this. And have you come across guys in the NBA who don't even know what a flex cut is? Oh, oh, what? What? Man. It's easy. I, don't know I learned to flex in seventh grade basketball. I can run it right now. Yeah, but you, but you. All it is is a baseline base. cut with a down screen. Yes. But you can get. Opposite side. Here's the thing, though. Guys get, you've down. seen guys get turned around. If you run it over and over, you actually get a decent shot. You so get like, a great so like, shot. So, like what, we, like what Oak's saying, it all comes around to coaching. Perfect time. Yes. Perfect time. Jesse walks in. Yeah, yeah. Jesse, you was the host. Jesse, what's good? You know Trappy, Jess? You ain't me, you ain't me, Trappy. You miss Trappy. You ain't Trappy. All right, all right, all right. Who's Trappy? Who's Trappy? Okay. Jess, let me ask you this. So I'm blown away by hearing you guys say there's people in the league that don't know how to play basketball. The Are there rappers that don't know how to rap? That's a great question. Yes, it is. Yes. You too. Let me answer that. Oh, you've been saying that. I've been, I heard a lot. Oh, uh, with the BMW 735, you've been pumping music, you've been complaining about rap for 20 years. Not only do rappers not know music, I can tell you one step further. Very, very few artists know the business. Maybe no. 10. You're saying 10 artists know no, the, the business, music, music business at all. They don't know anything. They don't know where the money comes from. They don't even, they can't follow the money. They don't know how to get paid. All they want to do is get a record deal. And it's the beginning and the end of their career. But that's the dream, though, Stout. You know that, like, you know, I mean, been in the game so long, you know the dream is to get signed. Like, I try to preach that, you know, signing yourself to somebody, you basically, you know, setting yourself up for enslavement or whatever it is. So I, yes. try to, I try to preach independence. But coming up, when you see 50 get a deal, when you see Hope, when you see whoever get their deal, cash or whatever, it's like, that sets yourself apart from everybody else that's doing the same thing in your community. And the big thing that we all strive for as black men, I know this sounds crazy, is one million dollars. That's it. Fam, that's it. We it's talked about that. One on million. million and then we all know in this room that once we get a million, it's it's a, it, it kind of starts going downhill. It's but so it's like hard. a hill. But that's that's the goal that we have as black men coming from where all of us has come from. Even when we looked at, I, I, I looked up the hustlers coming up. I didn't want to be nothing else but a, but a hustler when I came up. To the point, I was so messed up mentally, I almost used to want a stomach because that symbolized money in my neighborhood when you had a necklace that was hanging over here. Yeah, that's like, unbelievable. When you was fat and had like all, everybody I, around me had. I, no I, I, by the way, this thing goes on and on. In the music business, it's, it's devastating what they do. These guys are in no man's land at the age of 18. They get signed, somebody gives them some money, and they own their name for 20 years or longer. So when you see Prince, when he wrote Slave on the side of his face, he wasn't crazy. He was just way ahead of his time. He knew what was going on. Chance, Chance the Rapper is nothing but a manifestation of what Prince was talking about in 1996. There's going to be a revolution in the music business. There's gonna be there's gonna be a huge revolution in the music business. Who's gonna get credit with starting it? Chance? Does he get the credit? The credit in changing it, Luke Skywalker did it. He never got the credit for Master it. Master P? Master P did it. Master P did he it. He never got the credit for it. Cash Money? Cash Money did it. They didn't get the credit for it. 
whoever operationalizes it, so it's not a one-off, so it's not one thing and then done. Chance is just chance and then done. It needs to happen for 100 people. Yes. And That's whoever true. can Did operationalize it? it? No. No. He had the no. team sign a dub show. As soon as Jay and Dame, they did their thing, but then they got a record deal. Cause that's the dream, Stout. You, you on rap. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. That's the dream. I'm not, hold on, I'm not disrespecting the record deal. even if you get the deal and, and race it and don't do it and say f everybody next week, it's just that I got change, a deal. I'm, change, I'm not disrespecting the yeah. record deal. I know it's not disrespect, I'm just saying I'm that's just the, saying, that's the I, I know that's the dream, but if the dream is to really make money. That's not the route. That's not the route. But you gotta understand, man, I remember, man, I could, man, I could. Okay, so once again, I go back to the player circuit days. The reason I was solo with, with De Disturbing the Peace is because Dollar was locked up. So when Dollar got out of jail, I said, let's do this deal with, um, you know, with, with DTP. Let's do, let's be the first group or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I remember back then, Shaka, them, they were giving us $50,000 per for our deals. So I wanted that, you know what I'm saying? And so he offered the group 75. And so I said, well, cool, I'll take 50, and dog, uh, you get 25. And he was like, no, nah, I gotta, we gotta split this in half. And I was like, I worked too hard for 37, whatever the f it was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, and then um, you know, Dollar says, man, we just need to get in the door, get our foot in the door, you know what I'm saying? How black, how we think, we just need to get in the door. Once we get in the door, we gonna make our moves. Oh, that's how you end up in that. That's how I end up in that. <laughs> You're the only artist in the shop right now, right? Am I yeah. music artist? What's the first emotion or what's that feeling when you hear your name on wax, someone coming at you? What's that thought process? You have to have heard Has someone come at you. Has said your name on the track before? <laughs> Honestly, um, if it's like anything that triggers us coming from where we come from, it's the, the need to feel like you can't disrespect me like that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in a much mature place, kids and everything like that. So I want to play myself off the streets like, you know, maybe somebody younger, but it's like that. It's the reason why he took his Twitter off his phone. It's the reason he don't look at social media during the player. It's, a, it's this thing, this trigger that we got that even though we like rich somewhere else and they like losers in this little room, it's certain things that can like trigger us, certain little things. It's perfect you say that and you, Bron, you know, you're my brother, you say this and you, you, the one statement you've said that I play in my head daily is progress over pride. I mean, for me personally, when I decided to go back to Cleveland, I had to decide, like, because our owner at the time, when I left, decided to put out this article that we all know about, where he completely, like, bashed me and, like, disrespected not only me as an individual, but it disrespected my name. And my name is not just myself, it's my wife, it's my kids, my grandfather, you know what I'm saying, my mother, so many more people. So, you know, for me, when I decided to go back, and I talked to like Mav and Rich and Randy and everybody, and I had to let them know, because some people was on the fence. You know, even my wife was like, I ain't, my mama and my wife was like, that, I ain't with that. Your mom was definitely like, My mom like, was definitely like, she really, Dad, we no, ain't going back. No. And for me, it was more, it was more, I had to finally just be like, you know what, mom, it ain't even really about that. You know, me going back is more of this. It's more of a bigger picture, and it's more of a, all these kids, all these people that need inspiration and need a, a, a way to get out, and I believe I'm that way out. And so I had to be like, as much as like my mom mean everything to me and my wife mean everything, my kids and like, you know, my mama, she was just so like, I'm not like, listen, you go back, I ain't going back with you. Wow. Like, she like, I'm staying in Miami. Yeah, or I'm going somewhere else, you send me somewhere else. I had to be like, let's not worry about the small and let's worry about us trying to build something that's bigger than our name. I want to bring up this topic. After I watched Tom Brady win the Super Bowl, it made me start to think that the only thing that marks greatness is consistency over a long period of time. And you have to do it over and over How many and times over. win? Five? He's, he's been, been seven. seven. He's been, seven, been seven, seven. In how many years? 16. And that's like mind boggling. What Tom Brady did over the history of my life is the greatest thing I've seen in sports. My only argument with a, a, a football player 
being the greatest athlete of all time. 53 members of the team? Is that, no, not even that, Jesse, is that they only got to play one side of the floor, man. That's a good point. That's a legitimate Yes, answer. Brady is unbelievable. Brady is the greatest quarterback I've ever seen. That's a great point. But he, he, he affects the game one way. And that's by throwing the ball. I'm, I'm, it's, and it's great. You're right. And it's great. He doesn't affect the game one Brady way. Brady can play Brian. 22 years. Brian, it doesn't affect the game one way. He can play 22 years, but he, uh, he don't have to worry about it's certain things. It like is the only sport where you don't have to play player. defense or play the other side. Brian, it doesn't affect this, the game one way. This as a basketball player and the pounding that you take and running both sides. Okay, now I gotta do offense. Oh, I gotta get back on defense. Oh, I gotta get back on offense. Oh, I gotta get back on defense. You know, it's, you know, as physical as football is, and I know it's f to the body, I know it's crazy to the body, but for a quarterback, Belichick has done a great job of implementing those five guys in front to protect that asset every every He's Sunday. Right. That's the best. So point. Belichick, that's not Brady. Belichick is not recruiting or looking, scouting those those linemen, bringing in, you know, all those guys. For For, for us, every single night, like, you have to, like, you got to know both sides. Like, you know, we both play football. You play football. Rich played football. Uncle, he played football. The offense never even talked to the defense all week. We don't even speak to y'all. Two different teams. Really. It's two different teams. It, actually, it's three different teams. Special teams. When I play football offensively, I never even talk to the defensive side. That's the truth. I never even talk to y'all. Ain't nothing to talk about. And I'm sitting, ma'am, I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down, chilling. I'm sitting down like this on the bench. Oh, turn over. Oh, where my helmet? I don't even know where my helmet is. You grabbing a, a chin strap. Come on, man. You remember that? LeBron, LeBron, the only thing I got to say about Brady, the one thing about Brady. I'm not saying he's not great. He's the greatest football, ball, greatest football player of all time. 16 years. Oh, you know this. Dre, you know this. That guy goes like this. Get him a helmet. Can you catch? Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you, can you, hold on. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Can you, can you, can you run? You got two feet? Get him a helmet and a jersey. No, he got bumps. Wait, wait. How much you weigh? You can block. That's him and Belichick. That's this. No, guys. Belichick these three. Give me these guys. No. What about Rob Gronkowski? Steve. Get in the car with me. And the We're going to the Super Bowl. What about Gronkowski? We are going oh, to the God. Super Bowl. Once they get up, he hold these guys accountable. Wait, wait. You got two hands? Yeah, I'm going to throw you the ball. Oh, he can catch. Yeah. Belichick, give him a helmet. So He's with me. Is, so is that, me. So is that, You're with me. You're with me. You're with me. Let's go. Or is that more Belichick system? No, don't do that. That's not him. Run, run, run. That's more Belichick saying. My castle did that too. And so did Jacoby Brissett or whatever his name is this year. And so did Garoppolo. Brian and Jason, you know this. Is that more Brady? Coach can draw up the greatest system. Somebody got to execute it. You're they business. You got to have a staple. I have a great you idea. You got to have a staple. Somebody has to execute. Belichick didn't come back from 23. Oh, you no, got to no, do that. No, 23, no. throw the three white wide receivers. Let's just do that. <laughs> three white guys. <laughs> How do you do that? Listen, listen. We could do this all night long. That's the beauty of the shot. Don't be the bad guy. The beauty of the shot. <laughs> OK. Yo, cut the mic. I'm going to take my mic off so I can get it. We're doing a